My name is Sean Newby and I'm a senior technical architect with Perficient. And today I wanted to do a little demo to show you how to get a Spring MVC portlet up and running. It'll be a, a very simple portlet, but it'll give a, a, a good foundation on where to start with a Spring MVC portlet. I'll be using RAD 7.5 uh, as my development IDE and we will actually get a, a, a running portlet and I will publish it out to a WebSphere Portal 6.1 instance. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to go out to the Spring website and download the Spring framework. Um, this is the basically the home page of the Spring site. Currently you have to go to Products and Download Center and then they have it hidden down here at the bottom spring source community and open the download center you generally usually will get prompted with this where they want some information from you uh, if you don't feel like filling it out you can just go straight to the download page and currently the the latest release for spring is the 3.04 release uh, go ahead and download the entire one with the docs I've already done that so I didn't have to take time during the demo to, to do that. Um, and here we see what the download looks like. Uh, the dist folder has all the jar files that we'll be working with. So I'm going to go back to RAD now and create a basic empty 286 portlet. So we just select new project and we're going to want to create a portlet project and I will call my project name uh, first spring portlet and just check our options here it's a JSR 286 portlet and we're going to create it as a basic portlet so it doesn't have too much stuff in it. It's going to create the basic outline for us. And we're actually going to have to go in and delete some stuff that it creates. Uh, so we won't have it create the JSP for us and pretty much leaving everything at its defaults. And then we get the, the basic uh, template portlet that RAD creates for you. And actually we're going to come in here and delete some things. So the JSPs that it creates, or the one JSP we don't want, so we'll delete that. And then it creates a basic portlet class that extends generic portlet. And again, we don't want that either. So we'll come in and delete that. All right. Now the first thing we need to do, well there's a few things we need to do. We need to go in and get the Spring Framework jars and import those into our project. And then we will need to modify the web XML file and portlet XML file, some small edits. And then we have to create two Spring specific configuration files. Uh, one's an overall file that would be the, the Spring configuration file for the entire application and then once then you also create a configuration file for each portlet that you create. In this case we're only going to create one portlet class and so we'll only have the one Spring portlet configuration file. So first thing we do is get this open to web in lib and look at the Spring download. Again we go into the dist folder. The dist folder uh, has all of the jar files that make up the Spring framework. And Spring has set their project up in a modular fashion so that you don't have to include everything. For example, uh, you know, we're not going to be doing anything with JMS, so we won't need to include the JMS jar. Now, I believe this is what's needed for the uh, um, for Spring MVC portlet. Uh, it would be the ASM jar the beans, context support, context, core, expression, web portlet, web servlet, 
and basic web. You may be asking why the servlet one? Uh, the portlet MVC portion of the framework utilizes uh, a lot of the functionality that's in the servlet part of the framework so it doesn't have to repeat it. it, it you know, just ports it off back to the servlet part of the MVC framework. So I'll copy these and then just paste them into my web and lib. All right. Now we need, like I said earlier, we need to edit the web XML file and the portlet XML. So we'll start with the web XML file and switch to source view. And now I have a little cheat sheet that I'll be using so I don't have to type this all out. Uh, normally when I'm creating these projects I get like a, a template one or this would be a great example of a, a template spring project and then as I'm creating new projects or new portlet uh, applications I'll just copy out of that template. So this would this would be a good example of a, uh, a, a template project that you could use to base off all your further portlet development. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is set up a context parameter and I'm just going to be copy or cutting and pasting these from a, a cheat sheet that I have. Uh, I'll make a, a download of this code available so that you you as well will have access to this cheat sheet. Now this first context per, or param it tells Spring where to find its main configuration file and just by convention it's called application context we're going to move it down inside webinflib and create a, a directory called context and that's what we'll spring will be able to find its file next thing we have to do is a, a listener so when the application starts up its spring is fired and gets going uh, next thing is the servlet even though this is a portlet it's still going to call back to the servlet class. And then finally a servlet mapping to go along with that servlet. Um, when you're actually doing this you, you pretty much just blow through this every time. You, you don't really think about the, these changes that you're making. You just get in there, edit it, and you know you, you worry more about on the your, your business classes when you're doing the implementation. Not so much this basic configuration, but this is you know the, the framework or the, the baseline you need to set up in order to get the the portlet to work. Alright, and then we have to edit our portlet XML. And the edit in the portlet, portlet XML is actually really small. When uh, Rad created this, it created a, its own portlet class. Uh, we just want to switch that over to the Spring Frameworks portlet class. And there we go. So we have all those those basic edits out of the way.